Alstublieft. Ja, ja, ja. En de reden dat we hier zijn is redelijk simpel voor ons. Mijn naam is Winston Scholsberg. Ik ben de drummer van Play Like Jimmy. En wat jaren geleden zijn we gestart met het project. Ongeveer vijf, zes jaar geleden. En toen heette het nog Midnight Gypsies. Toen speelden we gewoon de muziek van Jimi Hendrix, omdat we helemaal verliefd zijn op zijn manier van spelen. Maar vooral op de muziek die gemaakt werd toen die in Band of Gypsies zat. Want dat is toch van een andere orde. Wie, wie is hier bekend met, de, met het materiaal van de Band of Gypsies? Ja? Als, het zou mooi zijn als iedereen dat had, maar dan zou je merken straks waarom we specifiek uh, dat stukje ontzettend bijzonder vinden om te spelen. Nou, ik ben een drummer, ik speel al een tijdje en op een gegeven moment was ik gestopt en ik dacht, weet je, drum is te gek, maar verhalen vertellen is nog veel leuker. En mensen coachen is ook nog veel leuker. En ik zag op een gegeven moment een uh, tribute band, en dat was die uh, Earthman of Higher Experience. En die gasten die blaasten mij letterlijk van het, van, van, uit de zaal. En inspireerde me om eigenlijk weer de drumstok op te pakken en uh, fanatiek weer te gaan drummen. En ik belde Nicky op, Nicky Bas, en ik belde erop. Ik zei, hey Nicky, laten we alsjeblieft weer, uh, weer Jimi Hendrix gaan doen. Want, uh, ik, die stokken die kriebelen in mijn handen en ik wil gewoon spelen. Ik speelde gewoon thuis nog, maar niet meer zo op het podium. Dus vandaar dat we hier weer zijn. En we zouden nu in Thailand zijn. <laughs> dat is een verhaaltje daaraan vast. We zouden in Thailand zijn, daar is het nou zo toe beginnen. Helaas kregen we nog geen vergunning van Thailand. En gelukkig dat we dat niet hebben geriskeerd, want we kregen ook een mail dat een band die geen vergunning had van het podium had gesleurd is door de politie. Omdat ze heel streng zijn met vergunningenbeleid. Dus wij gaan morgenmiddag vertrekken wij naar Cambodja. Dan gaan we onze Azië tour doen. Dus na deze show gaan we in de rechter weg en dan gaan we daar voor het eerst Azië proberen te veroveren met deze sfeer. Nou, dat is een beetje de introductie, de setup van dit, uh, dit ding. Hebben jullie een beetje zin in, in, een, in een masterclass in wat uitleg? Ja, kom op, kom op. Nou, ik, ik, zal, ik zal in eerste instantie zal ik de, de bassist uitnodigen om, uh, om te komen. Uh, dat is Martin Zij. Die ken ik niet zo lang. Geef hem alsjeblieft een applaus. Die ken ik wel verteld, misschien wel, misschien wel dat is het, zes, zeven maanden of zo. En, en Nicky speelde al met hem. En die zei van, ik heb een technische bassist voor dit project. Want je moet met iemand spelen die, die begrijpt wat voor, wat voor sfeer je neer probeert te zetten. Want de muziek van Jim is niet alleen de noten spelen. Maar het is vooral de atmosfeer en de, de spiritualiteit die, die wij ja, heel hoog hebben, hebben zitten. Dus Martin is, uh, is de guy. En uh, we gaan met hem uh, zware, serieuze dingen doen. Volgend jaar gaan we Amerika toeren en dat soort dingen. Nou, dat is niet interessant voor nu. Nou, en de guy die ik nu ga introduceren, dat is, ik ken hem al twintig jaar en hij heeft, in die twintig jaar heeft hij me eigenlijk keer verbaasd met, uh, met zijn skills, met zijn, uh, zijn kennis van zaken. Niet alleen op gitaargebied of muziekgebied. Hij speelt dertien instrumenten, dus probeer je even voor te stellen, als je met zo iemand repeteert, dat betekent dat hij elk instrument dat in die band zit, gewoon kan en niet zomaar kan. Hij, hij drukt beter dan ik, om je een beetje een beeld te geven. Dus als hij mij wat uitlegt, dan word ik een beetje gefrustreerd. Dus ik zeg, nee, je moet het zo doen. Ja, 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 Nicky, ik ben niet zoals jij, ik ben niet zo goed zoals jij. Dus 13 instrumenten, loopt tegen de 60 aan en zoals hij zich gedraagt, is hij net 18. Hij heeft uh, Vendetta heeft hij gehad. Nou, ik heb de audio-opnames en de video-opnames van Vendetta gezien. Hij was de eerste zwarte artiest die een uh, rock-trio had in Amerika en een platencontract had bij Epic. En een videoclip had, nou in die tijd kostte een videoclip iets van 50.000, dus je weet, 20, 30 jaar geleden, dat is van zin. Ik ken geen betere gitarist en zanger in combinatie die dit zou, zou kunnen doen op dit moment. En jullie zullen straks wel horen waarom. Ik vraag jullie een daarvan een applaus voor Nicky Buzz. I said sexy, but I say you want old, so you have to move a little bit closer. How's everybody doing? Good? Yeah, cool. I uh, will not be speaking Dutch. I guess you figured that out. So uh, if I need to go slow for a couple of people, just let me know, okay? Okay. Okay. A little bit shy, Nicky. 
Just cause I got a chain in my nose don't make me a mean guy. I just got a chain in my nose. He's a little bit mean. Okay, as guitar players, you know this is gonna be really loud, so. Not me playing, me just me putting my chord back in. Oh, that wasn't so bad. All right, guys, here's what we're gonna do today. We're going to, we're gonna split the Jimi Hendrix Experience and the Band of Gypsies. Cause that's really two different Jimmies. The Jimi Hendrix Experience was Jimi Hendrix, Noel Redding, and Mitch Mitchells. Can I get, who's ever sitting in the back, can I, can I get you to come up a bit forward so I can actually talk to you because I, I'm like, I feel like I'm talking to nothing because I can't really see because like, you know, I'm sitting in the dark. Oh, it's a camera guy. <laughs> you, you, you can stay. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, we're gonna we're, we're gonna split this thing into two. Now, the original Jimi Hendrix experience had a bass player that was actually a guitar player. I don't know if any of you are playing in a band, but if you ever play in a band that the guitar player plays bass, uh uh, it's a whole different animal. He's going, to, he's going to play bass like a guitar player, not like a bass player. So that completely shaped the sound of the experience. Also, this guitar player, bass player, actually thought he should have been Jimi Hendrix. He actually thought Jimi should have been on bass and he should have been on guitar. Go figure that out. So you can imagine how he was playing. And then they had a drummer who was a jazz drummer, which Jimi turned into a rock drummer, sort of acid, psychedelic kind of thing. So you had a very unique sound with that. You had Jimmy coming from America who was based in rhythm and blues, the original R&B rhythm and blues. And you had an English jazz drummer, and then you had a bass player who was actually a guitar player. So Jimmy had his work cut out for him trying to put something together. And the sound of the experience was very loose. It was a very loose sound. Everybody was sort of playing in and out of each other. It wasn't very structured, but it was a new sound. So what we're gonna do is we're going to talk about how these two sounds differ from each other. And we're gonna pick one song that everybody knows. Everybody knows Hey Joe, yeah? All right, everybody knows Hey Joe. Now, <clears throat> The original Hey Joe, get the sound here. That's how it starts, right? Now, one important thing about playing like Jimmy is he did not use as much distortion as most guitar players do. You will not get the Hendrix sound with your distortion crank to 11. You may sound like Metallica. <laughs> you may sound like Ingway. You may sound like everybody but Jimmy. Jimmy did not use that much distortion. However, he played incredibly loud. And that's where he got his power from. In back in the days, which I remember, you would have me personally, I used to play through four 100 watt Marshall stacks, eight cabinets, all on 10. Okay? If I hit a chord, you'd get a haircut and your parents would fall down. That's how loud it was. But it gave you a sonic experience. So when you play that loud, you're going to get sustained just from the volume itself. So you didn't need compressors, you really didn't need that much distortion. It was just pure power. So the first thing you want to do if you want to play like Jimmy is get the tone right. 
Like. Now you'll hear it waving, waka waka waka. That's from a device called a univibe. A univibe was originally made for a Fender electric piano. But Jimmy was an experimenter. So he liked to use different things in order to give him different sounds. And he had a man named Roger Mayer who made everything for him. His flangers, his courses, everything. Those things didn't exist until Jimmy came along. He actually encouraged this guy, I want to have this sound, and this guy would go to his laboratory and he would actually make it. And Jimmy would go, oh cool. But the Univibe was already out. So Jimmy used the Univibe a lot, but not until Band of Gypsies, actually. So you want to have pretty much that kind of sound for your, for your rhythm, so you can uh, play things like this. and playing up by the 12th fret gives you a completely different sound. If you're gonna, if you're gonna play a Jimmy Lake like You get more of the wood sound in the guitar. I like to call it the woo woo sound. But you get much more of the wood. You hear the wood coming out through the notes. And the further up you go, of course, the thinner it sounds because the strings are thinner up here and the strings are thicker down here. And it has a lot to do with when you're playing like Jimmy, what kind of sound you want to get. All right, so let's, let's take Hey Joe and we're going to play it normal. All right? Hey, 
you get the picture, right? Now, thanks. Now let's take the same song. We're gonna do it like Jimmy would have done it in the band of gypsies. And we're gonna start talking about color. I'm letting all the strings ring. It's a bit sloppy. It's just there. There's not much color in there. Now check this out. flowers, in terms of trees, grass, nature, color, because then you get music. Any idiot can do this. It's not very hard to do, but if you want to play in color, then you must think about being a rhythm guitarist and a lead guitarist at the same time. Now listen very carefully, you will hear this chord, but not that one, this one, this one, this one, you know, C, G, D, and A. But you will hear all these little notes weaving in and out in between, like this. a lot better, don't you think? Yeah. And that's how Jimmy would play. Now, let's take the bass and the drums. When we were playing the original, he was playing a lot of fiddles and he was pretty much all over the place. And he pretty much stayed the same, but he was also playing a, a little bit all over the place. And what we're gonna do now, we're gonna take the groove and make it simple. That's the difference between Buddy Miles and Mitch Mitchells was their buddy mouths would just go Mitch Mitchells That's a lot of fucking confusion when you're trying to get a groove going. And you got a bass player going do 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 that's a, a, a lot of noise. Watch what happens when he plays the groove very steady, and then he plays a bass line that is fitting to what I'm doing. And let, let me add a little bit to it. What also happens is that we, when the uh, Band of Justice plays, it was slower, much, much slower. So we, we're gonna emphasize that a little bit here.
There's all kinds of ways to reach people. I mean, some people like really violent stuff. Some people like really beautiful stuff. Some people like stuff that's really spacey. But you have to reach them. And you cannot reach them if you cannot make them feel what you feel. It's playing from emotions is what I'm talking about here. It's pure emotion that Jimmy played from. Playing like Jimmy is not playing the notes. It's understanding how to take your emotions, put them into the guitar, and then give them out to the audience. Am I making sense to you? Okay, now check this out. You can go on. You can play. Simple it, right? Purple haze. And you can play it like this. Or you can play it like this. See, I'm shaking that string. It sounds like, uh, who's that guy who used to sausages? Andre Hosses. It sounds like his voice. Yeah. Because then, then you feel it. A lot of times when guitar players, they bend the string, they'll go, they go. No, make it like this. You feel that, right? Now it's singing. Do not 
not be afraid to shake that string. It's the difference between get out of my face and get out of my face. It's a big difference. The second one, the person will get out of your face. The first one, the person is going to look at you. It's the difference between saying to your girlfriend, you get you, your piece of paper, right? And you go, hello, you are really beautiful. Will you go out with me? Good luck. <laughs> you, you don't talk like that. So you don't want to play your guitar like that. It's not enough to learn the notes. Express yourself. That's what's important. Now, let's get back to the um, experience versus band of gypsies. Maybe there's a question. Maybe maybe there's a question. Oh, yeah. Is there a question? Give us some house lights, please. Can we see the faces? Yeah, yeah. Give us some house lights here. This. The concert will be later. I guess the concert's now. <laughs> what, what <are> you <laughs> yeah, oh, there you go, there they are. Okay, it's, are, are there any questions? No, with one, you know. <laughs> okay, I'm not, I, know, I know what they think. It's one to the That's side. That's a question in the, from the Okay, what is it? Emphasize it on as a drummer. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe you want to experience it. You want to play with these guys and, and experience how. No, you don't. <laughs> yeah, man, do it. No, it's but cool. that's that's the idea of masterclass, right? To get the experience. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So uh, actually, what Nick is saying is the same. When I when I want to emphasize what I what I what I really believe as a as a drummer, then. It's not about, again, not about the notes, it's about how I feel the notes. Who fully what it will spell, who will let it my, my emotions that in. And maybe give a little example if, if, if I may. not serving how many drummers are here okay notice that he's not serving tea that's what I call serving tea most if you're gonna play rock drums you do not want to hit it in the middle of the head that's for little girls and sissies or homos if you be, I guess is what you call it no or whatever. I mean, if you're homo, I, mean, I have nothing against you. You're just not going to play drums in my band like that. <laughs> it's, it's, you must hit the drum with authority. Now, whether he likes it or not, he controls the entire band. Period. If the song speeds up and you're a drummer, it's your fault. Don't be looking around and saying, yeah, you're yeah, speeding up. He's only speeding up because you let him. It is your job to keep time. That's why you are there. I saw a lot of hands coming up with Tony. It's a master class, so you know. The drummer's here. This is not about being embarrassed. This is no, about learning something. You're learning something. Come on, man. Here we go. Come on. Here's your 
the power, but you're also completely insane. <laughs> so we're going to fix that. We need you to go into the groove. We don't need you to go <laughs> You sound like an Afghan war. We don't want an Afghan war. We will give you that in the show when we say to you, what's your name? We'll say, ladies and gentlemen, Dominique, and then we will walk off the stage and then you can do whatever you want. And you can show your chops to everybody. You can show everybody how great you are. That's the number one mistake that I see Dutch drummers make. They want to show everything they got when they sit down. That's not your job. Your job is to make it groovy. If you don't see girls doing like this, you ain't doing it right. You're not doing it right. So let's play it again. Concentrate on sexiness. You don't beat your girlfriend up like that, do you? I hope not. Okay, so concentrate on sexiness. We'll play it again. Ready? One, two, three, four. Us. So you need to play shorter notes. 
He's going to play. I'm going to sing the notes you should do. Ready? One, two, three, four. Um. I'm gonna show you very slowly. Oh, who's coming? Yeah, we got someone coming. Come on, come on. Go ahead. Show yourself. And you, yeah. <laughs> and um, if you don't have any guitar, you can even play mine. Ooh. You got your guitar? Are you gonna play mine? <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. See, in English, we call this a pig. I know what you call a pig. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> so what do you have, what is it? You call it a plectrum? But in America, these are called guitar picks. Oh, he bought his own pig. <laughs> a Jimmy Andrews pig. Oh, you, you got Jimmy Andrews' pig? <laughs> All right. Your name? Hugo. 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 Hugo Boss. All right. Camera actually now. 
You know what I'm saying? That's how he sung the song. Jimmy was cool. Jimmy really didn't give a damn. Jimmy was just cool. So Jimmy's gonna go, hey Joe, where you going that gun in your hand, baby? See, a, a black man can call another black man baby and he understands what that means. That like, what's up, baby? Over here you get all homophobic and shit. What's up, baby? No, 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 no. But that's how we are. So Jimmy knew that he was going to sing. So he didn't play as much as he played because he would be in the way of his own guitar. So when you're going to play like Jimmy, you have to make sure what you're playing is in rhythm with what you're singing. Now there's that big word, rhythm. Now I'm going to teach you something in my music that you probably have never thought about it in this way. Let's take an old fashioned telephone. When you pick it up, it goes and until you start dialing, right? That's a tone. All music is a tone. It doesn't become music until you put rhythm to the tone. You take the same phone that goes and you go and uh oh somebody booty shaking because now you got music so you always think in terms of rhythm when you are playing guitar and singing very important so let's do what you did make it a lot more simple so I can sing. One, two, three, one. Hey, Joe. Where you going and gunning your hand, baby? Hey, Joe. Where you going and gunning your hand, baby? Yeah. Notice that when I stopped singing, he started playing leads. That's how it works. Now, if he was an idiot, he would be playing leads over top of my voice, which I've also heard. So, here you go. Did a great job. We have a song, a saxophone player. Now I know, I know Jimmy was uh, experimenting a lot, but maybe the saxophone player could just come up and just have a bit of this, like uh, Josh Clinton would say, pee on this. Oh, okay, check it out. How many, how many of you are real Hendrix fans? Okay, how many of you know Electric Ladyland? How many of you know Still Rain? It has a saxophone in it. <laughs> didn't know that, did I, I didn't know that. <laughs> didn't know that shit. All right. We're going to talk about. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna do this thing in A. Is an apple, right? And we're gonna do like a, we're gonna do like a serious shuffle. So and we're gonna take it back, back and forth, a half step, so like this. Down, 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 down. Now watch how we back this guy up. You ready? One. We don't know him. We never seen this guy in our life. Watch how we play together. One, two, one, two. Thank you. 
This is what we're gonna do. Just a B flat, right? B flat tenor? Okay. What we're gonna do? We're gonna play in B flat so it's easy for him to play. That way he can run up and down the keys and he can't make a mistake because it's in B flat. you to play whatever I play. Okay? That's not what I play. Play this. I'm only playing three notes. One, two, three. is playing and find your spot. You don't want to play on top of somebody. Because then you get noise and it'll sound a bit like this. One, two, one, two, noise. That's not music. I'm not listening to him. He's not listening to me. And we don't care what the other one's playing as long as we're playing. That's not music. That's noise. Now, if I want to hear what he's playing, I'm going to play more like this. One, two, one, two. You can actually hear what he's doing. But if I'm playing on top of him, you're not gonna hear it. Your name is? Robert. 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 Thank you, Robert. Okay, back to listening. How many people actually know the Band of Gypsies album? All right. <laughs> How many of you know this lick? Very powerful lick. Most people play it like this. cliche means cliche okay don't think in terms of cliche when you learn something make your mind blank like a piece of paper then you will hear is that like this for instance if I play this Most people go, oh yeah, I know what that is. Do you? 
did you actually listen to what I played or did you hear a little bit of it and then you finished it? That's how most people listen. Now let's go back to the, to the band of gypsies this. Remember when I was talking about color before? You can play it like this. That sounds okay. Or you can play it like this. Sounds a lot better, huh? No? <laughs> See, it's about shade. Light and dark. Loud and soft. So if you're gonna play, there's no color in that. But when you emphasize it like this, now you got groove and attitude as a guitar player. It's like I'm playing drums with myself on guitar. Now watch what happens when these guys join in. the same bass line over and over again, it would hypnotize you. For instance, take this groove, very slow but cool.
It's hypnotic. It's hypnotic. That's the most, the most important thing to remember when you're playing like Jimmy is to get that hypnotic thing going on. Because that guy did a lot of acid. He was not here when he was playing. He was out there floating around in a whole world of colors. And I'm not encouraging you to do acid. I don't do drugs at all. He doesn't do drugs. He doesn't do drugs. I don't drink. He doesn't drink. He doesn't drink. I don't smoke. He doesn't smoke. He doesn't smoke. We're completely natural. And I'm 60 years old and they're in their 40s. You don't get to be 60 years old and look like this, a drunken, drug addict, fucking asshole. So anyway, no drugs, all right? It's not good for you. All the drugs you need is right here. You have all the experiences you need right here. In your guitar, or your bass, or your drums. You cannot get higher than play. It's not possible. Take my word for it. Nigga. Actually, it's time we, we went over for five minutes, so maybe there's a question or like whatever you want to ask us something. Yes. What strings do I use? These? No, I use Diderios. Nines. Diderio nines. This is a this is a Fender Squire guitar. And it has, I, I ripped out the pickups and I put in lace trend sensors. Or lace golds actually, these are lace golds. Don Lacey, he made the original pickups for Fender in the 70s. So I put these in to get the sound that I want. You don't need an expensive guitar to play well. You need expensive fingers. And the only way to get your fingers expensive is to rehearse. Um, any more questions? Any, any other questions? <laughs> Come on, man. That's the one. You're here anyway, so. <laughs> the guitar player, Hugo, is here. Yeah, can you uh, also do the singing uh, solo? I didn't hear it. If you could do the singing solo? In who knows? In who knows? Oh. <laughs> that. that part? <laughs> do you know who actually? Do you know who actually was doing that? Buddy Miles. That was the drummer. That wasn't Jimmy. <laughs> so I take my turn now. <laughs> we, but, but 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 yeah, we will we we will actually do that when we do the concert in in a, in a, in a half hour or so. Um, okay. Do you like the master class? Yeah. Did you learn something? Yeah. Okay. Very good. We are very happy that you're here. Um, it, it always makes me more than happy to see young musicians. I started playing when I was three. I was a professional when I was nine. And I've never done anything else, ever. I've never had a job in my life. I've never been on social. I've just played music. It can be done. If you love it, you become music. You're not even human, you're just music. And it's a wonderful, wonderful thing to be. Thank you very much. Thank I appreciate you, you guys. We'll see you in a